She's got long legs and short shorts, but she ain't got no teeth. She wears a red bandana on her head, and she smiles so, so sweet. She'll steal your heart, a very first step should rip apart your soul. She'll torture your mind and waste your time and drag you down the road. Cause she's a Jezebel, St. Andrew Jezebel. Cause she's a Jezebel, St. Andrew Jezebel. Happy Halloween, y'all. You're listening to the St. Andrew's Jezebel podcast. This is Ashley Feller. I'm a third generation Panama City native, and I'm also a singer songwriter. There's a lot of exciting things coming up this spooky season, especially this weekend in historic St. Andrews, and I can't wait to tell you about all the exciting happenings. Also this week, we've got salty local Pat Neese of the Bay Storytellers and the St. Andrews Ukulele Orchestra, and she's here to tell us about a special event happening tomorrow night at City Hall featuring some of the local Bay Storytellers. Also, she's got some graveyard comedy and a little bit of a scary story for us. This week's old news segment talks about the Halloween fest that happened here in St. Andrews in 1934, so I hope you don't miss that. So grab your Halloween candy, your favorite seasonal beer, settle in with your favorite blanket, and get ready to enjoy the show. Halloween edition. Hey all you little ghosts and goblins, this is a big week coming up in St. Andrews. I love Halloween. I love the costumes, especially the homemade ones. I love the decorations. And who doesn't love the treats? I am so happy to tell y'all about all the fun things going on in historic St. Andrews. The Museum Committee meets tonight, Thursday, October 28th at 5 p.m. at the Printing Museum. This is open to anyone, and the committee meets once a month, but opportunities are abound all month long in archival projects, exhibit development, setup, organizing, assisting with field trips for kids, and so much more. No experience necessary. Make a difference for museum visitors of all ages. So this next event is technically in downtown Panama City, but the Bay Storytellers are such a unique part of local culture, I couldn't leave this out. Join the Bay Storytellers at City Hall October 29th for a spectacularly scary good time at the city of Panama City City Hall. The Quality of Life Department presents a haunting in the hall. This is a haunted story time experience featuring local tale narrators, Bay Storytellers weaving a hauntingly spooky tale sure to amuse and fright. Bay Storytellers will have two sessions that night, with the first session featuring not-so-scary stories beginning at 7 p.m., and the second is a little more dark, and that starts at 8 p.m. As far as I know, our guest Pat Neese is telling, Brenton French, Paul McAuliffe, and also Norm Capra, and maybe there will be more. Don't miss this family-friendly, hauntingly good time. You should also make plans with the Historic St. Andrews Waterfront Partnership this Saturday, October 30th, starting at 9 a.m. at the Market at St. Andrews, and come and join the Trick or Treat Trail down Beck Avenue. The merchants will have their storefronts decorated for the season and will be handing out treats for all the kiddos as well. At noon, once you've reached your sugar high, come back to the entertainment tent at the market for a costume contest. The adult first prize is a $100 gift card, and kids first place will also receive a $50 gift card. So wear your most creative costumes, bring your little ones trick-or-treating, and have a wonderful time in St. Andrews. Happening at the same time this Saturday is the Witches of St. Andrews annual charity bike ride. The staging will be set up behind the tap room in St. Andrews. Check-in is at 9 a.m. and the ride starts at 10 a.m. As many of you are now familiar, it's become nearly a yearly event for the Witches of St. Andrews to hold their annual charity Witches Bike Ride. This is their fifth annual opportunity to raise money to fight pancreatic cancer and to increase awareness of pancreatic cancer in our community. This year, they are riding in honor of Eric Eisenberg, a lifelong resident of Panama City who lost his life after a short battle with pancreatic cancer. It also honors cancer survivors and remembers others who have lost their lives to cancer. Their charity bike ride builds awareness of this dreaded disease and makes a difference in the lives of those affected by cancer here and now. Your donation may be given in honor or in memory of someone. Regardless of your level of support, your contribution will help our community step up to fight against cancer. I was really happy to have two of the witches, Pat Ray and Sonia Caldwell, here a couple of weeks ago on the podcast. If you missed episode 48, I highly recommend you take the time to go back and find out more about the witches of St. Andrews and their cause. Saturday night is Hobo Pride Night. 
Hello Queen edition at the Salty Hobo from 6 to 10. This is a free event for those 21 and up, featuring your favorite drag queens, Bella Naveau, Tara Card, and Winter Candy. Sorry if I mispronounced any of the names. There will be a costume contest, and the top three best overall contests win certificates, prizes, and more. The party starts at 6 p.m., and the show times are at 7 and 9 p.m. Your hostess and MC, Bella Naveau, along with Hobo Pride Night alumni, Tara Card, and Hobo Newcomer, Wintier Candy, guarantees you a night of Halloween debauchery on the beautiful St. Andrews Bay with Royal Entertainment providing the sounds. To add to the fun, they'll be having a 50-50 cash raffle and selling $5 raffle tickets for a chance to win a custom handcrafted blanket of the diversity rainbow flag. We may even have some brand new LGBTQ Center t-shirts and Bay Pride t-shirts for sale. No cover. Sunday might be a day to catch up on your sleep after all that candy and all that Halloween fun you've been having. But when you do wake up, why not take a peaceful stroll to see the new murals in St. Andrews? One was painted by our most recent guest, Morgan Summers. She's on episode 49. And her mural is on the side of the Salty Hobo Sandwich Shop. Also, make sure you check out the progress of the mural that is currently being painted by Floriopolis on the side of Sun Jammers on the corner of Beck and 11th Court. Both of them are amazing. Well, I don't want to overwhelm y'all. I'd be willing to bet that some of you are already in sugar comas. So that's all the community events I've got for this week. I hope you'll go back and listen to episodes 48 and 49 in case you missed them. They are both excellent episodes featuring some really wonderful salty locals. Tune in next week for more community events happening exclusively in historic St. Andrews. One of the best things about St. Andrews is that you can see live music every day. That's right. There is live music being played somewhere in St. Andrews seven nights a week. Fortunately, my friend Ken Schaefer creates and publishes a weekly schedule for St. Andrews as well as most of Bay County. Ken's spreadsheet schedule is updated often when there's any changes. Ken also shares individual music events and is walking the walk and talking the talk when it comes to supporting live music. Not only does Ken supply the music schedules, but he attends several music performances a week and takes fantastic photos of the musicians. As a working musician myself, I feel blessed to have Ken and his wife Donna as treasured members of our local musical family. Make sure you like and follow Ken's page, Salty Sounds in St. Andrews, and Oh Boy Music on Facebook, so that you'll always know where all the live music will happen. Thank you so much, Ken, for everything you do. Today we are here with Pat Neese of the Bay Storytellers and also the St. Andrews Ukulele Orchestra. Thank you for being here today, Pat. I am delighted. Yay. And so you've been coordinating events with the Bay Storytellers for quite a while. Please tell us a little bit about your group. Well, we're like any group. We grow large and then we, you know, kind of disappear and then we grow large again. Right now we're in a state of flux. We have about five people who are tellers. We lost two not too long ago, which they were just fabulous. But I I think some people don't know what it is we do. I mean, you say storytellers and they're thinking, ah, oh, yeah, we'll sit around and just, you know, chew the fat. And we do some of that, but we we try to, I, th- I think what stories do is they, they help us make sense of the world. That's what they've always done. And when we can put something in a story form, it makes things more logical. I found that out with my students when I was teaching if I could put something in a story form. So our group, have, we tell stories at churches, we tell stories at libraries, anywhere, and then we produce our own events. For years, we did Halloween at the, oh, where am I thinking? In Roberts Lynn, Hall? Roberts Hall. So we would do Roberts Halloween. And it was a fundraiser for Roberts Hall. And a lot of times, whatever we do is a fundraiser for that group, whether it's Floriopolis or, you know, any group that wants to have us come and do. So we get together on the second Tuesday of the month here at Floriopolis at six o'clock. Some people just come to listen. Some people come and say, well, I don't have any stories. And then they find out they do. Mm -hmm. 
Some people come to tell because they've got an itching, you know, I want to get this story out. So, of course, Halloween is one of our favorite times. And anytime I go to a school, especially, or a festival, and you say to the kids, okay, what kind of story do you want? You know what they're going to say. We want a scary story. So those have always been favorites of the young and the old and the in-between. Awesome. Well, I had a great time last year at Ghost in the Field. That was so much fun. And so what's the plan for this year's Halloween? This year, the city of Panama City is hosting us at their new and lovely city hall at the Rotunda on October 29th. We are going to do two sessions, a seven o'clock for the younger kids with stories not so scary. We call it Halloween light. Mm -hmm. And then at eight o'clock, we will get a little darker. It's free. It's open to the public. We are just excited to have a venue like that. So it'll be fun. That sounds great. And who's telling? Who is telling? Well, of course, I am Paul McAuliffe, Brenton French, who is just fabulous, fabulous. I don't know about the other two, so I'm not going to say their names yet. But, you know, Norm Capra, I think pretty sure Norm's going to be telling. So we'll we'll have a variety. Oh, and Robin Rennick is coming to us from Port St. Joe. She is part of our group, but as you can, you know, she's not going to make every meeting. So there'll be a variety. That sounds like so much fun. I fully intend to be there. And how did you get into storytelling? And when did you realize that it would eventually become a significant part of your career? Well, I get asked that question. And what's funny is I think about when I was five years old, my mother gave birth to my younger brother. So as about seven years old, he was toddling along like a second hip, you know, anywhere I went, there he was. So I would tell him stories, but I only knew two. And one of them was a dreadful, horrible, I I don't even know where I heard it. It was the story of Bloody Bones. And it's one of those jump stories, you know, where Bloody Bones is in the house and he's coming to get her and he's on the third step. Clunk, clunk, (laughs) clunk. Mary, it's Bloody Bones. I'm coming to get you, and I'm on the fifth step. And so it goes, and my brother would listen, and he knew what was going to happen, but he would jump every time when Buddy Bones finally got her. So I'd have to say, going way back, that those are the first stories I told. I don't remember what the second one was. It obviously just left my memory. But it wasn't until I became a teacher trying to help kids remember it, whether it was a, uh, a, a formula for math or a st- historical story, if I could put it in story form, if I could make a story for them to hook these things together, they remembered. So I started telling stories and then I branched out to other stories, folklore, the grandfather tales, you know, that that's a huge collection of wonderful stories. And other teachers would say, oh, come do that for my kids. Come tell those stories for my children. So in my school, I would be hither and yon. And then it branched out to other schools. And I don't know, I became a storyteller, not realizing that there were people who made their living doing this. So that's kind of how I fell into it. In the summertime, I'd be really busy because I didn't have school. When I was teaching, if they hired my substitute, then I would go and tell. I didn't get paid, but my sub was covered. And I don't know. Once I retired, I could do it whenever and however I got a gig. Well, that's awesome. And I love all the stories that you tell. They've, they've gotten me a few times. And so is there anything coming up regionally for you that you'll be participating in for the rest of the year? Not for the rest of this year. Now, we are going to be doing Christmas stories again at the mm-hmm. Rotunda. I'm telling you the date, I think, is the 17th. I did not bring it with me, but we'll be doing that. And then in January, which I realize is no longer in this year, but in January, the Florida Storytelling Association, of which I never knew existed wow. for the longest time, is holding their annual festival, storytelling festival, in Mount Dora. 
And it's always a joy and a half to be there. So I'll be participating in that. That's fantastic. And what do you believe is the most important part of a memorable story? Here's what I tell when I'm doing a storytelling class. The part that people take away is the end. That's why the ending of a story is so important. Mm -hmm. You can blather on and have all these things happening, but if you cannot wrap that up in a nice tight knot or a good twist, then your story just kind of falls flat. So when you're creating a story, and and people that write and people who tell will tell you over and over and over again, it's the ending that you really have to struggle with to make it just right. When I'm working with kids, I'll say, the worst thing you can do is say, oh, and it was all a dream. That is simply such a, oh, awful way to end something. So I like I like to work on the endings. I was doing working on a story one time. It was with all the Jacks. I loved all the Jacks, Jack B. Nimble and Jack Spratt and and Little Jack Horner and Jack and Jill. And I thought, let me put them all in one story. And it rambled along really well, but I didn't have an ending until I'm working with some eighth graders, and I think we were doing Greek mythology. <laughs> But somewhere in the back of my mind, my uh, subconscious is still working on the Jack story. And all of a sudden it came to me. So I just, I stopped and I said, okay, we're done. I got to (laughs) go. Because I had to go and finish it out while it was still on my mind. But that's what happens when you're working with story. You know, some of my stories have been bubbling along for years and I'll pull them out and I'll look at them. And sometimes it works and sometimes they have to go back in the closet. Absolutely. I know about the whole work in progress thing. I've got a story that I just cannot get an ending that I am just decided on because there's so many I can think of. Is that the one about your grandmothers? No, this one's about pot-bellied pigs. Oh, <laughs> we would love to hear that sometime. I'll come to the meetup sometime and yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I have. So since we've got Halloween coming up, I was wondering if maybe you'd like to tell us a short Halloween story for our listeners. Well, before I do that, I want to share something that I do, especially with the younger ones okay. when we're doing Halloween light. I do a graveyard humor. Oh. And so what I have is I have different tombstones that people had put up. And for the example, this one says, once I wasn't, then I was, now I ain't again. (laughs) Or when I die, bury me deep. Tell my classmates not to weep. Tell Miss Brady I've gone to rest and I won't be back for that science test. So there's some of my, I will change depending on where I'm telling, if I'm mm-hmm. telling down south. These are good. I never went to Harvard. I never went to Yale. I got my education at the Bay County Jail. Ah, Ooh. That's a good one. Here's the last one I'll do right now. When you come past my grave and I am dead and rotten, take a deep breath and hold your nose and just keep right on trotting. <laughs> Those are all so good. Yeah, you know, there's a bunch of them. And so we all, you know, it kind of gives a little humor, dark humor mm-hmm. to the situation. Judy Cooley was one of my partners in crime. Judy Cooley died during Hurricane Michael. But Judy and I did an event in Port St. Joe where we shared a stage and shared some stories, did a little tandem telling. Tandem mm-hmm. is when you have, of course, two tellers. And Judy never could get her lines right (laughs) and would just crack me up every time. But it's the story of Bloody Mary. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we did it in poetry form. So we did, there once was a queen. She was a mean queen. She commanded and she demanded. And if you didn't do what she told you to... She'd cut off your head. Then you'd be dead. She ruled for years, putting out horror and tears. And when she finally died, nobody cried for Bloody Mary. They buried her deep 
and left her to rot. And after a while, people forgot what she was and was not. Bloody Mary. Centuries passed, and at long last, kids tell the story of the queen that was gory. Bloody Mary. They say, well, just as before, if you call out her name, you can see her once more. If you stand before your mirror in the middle of the night and you stare at yourself and you turn off the light and you say the words that are just exactly right, she'll appear there in your mirror. And she'll give you such a fright. (gasps) Well, there was one little girl who loved to hear scary stories. She would listen and squeal. She never thought anything anybody ever told her was real. (laughs) And then she heard about Bloody Mary. And she learned the words to chant. And she stood before her mirror. And she said, Oh, oh, I can't. (laughs) But it was such fun to be scared. It can't hurt anything, she thought. And she forgot what her preacher and her teachers and her mother had taught. (sighs) I believe in Bloody Mary. She said as she looked in the mirror, I believe in Bloody Mary. She said as she leaned nearer and nearer, I believe in Bloody Mary. She said in the darkness and gloom, I believe in Bloody Mary. She said all alone in that room. And then she looked at herself. And her hair was a mess. And where those clothes came from, she just couldn't guess. And she looked at her eyes, and her eyes were all shiny. And she held up her hands, and her hands were all slimy. Oh, the little girl looked at herself, and she saw Bloody Mary right there reaching out for the little girl's throat. And if you want to hear the rest of the story, come to the Rotunda, October 29th, downtown Panama City Hall. We'll see Bloody Mary then. Ooh, you had to leave us on a cliffhanger, didn't you? That, y'all, if y'all could see me, the hairs on my arms are raised, and I have real legitimate goosebumps. <laughs> well, we do have a lot of fun, yes. and I think Halloween is just my favorite time of year to do stories. Yes, folks, absolutely. Please come to the Rotunda and see the Bay Storytellers. And how can folks find y'all online and beyond the Bay Storytellers? The Bay Storytellers are on Facebook. We do not have a website anymore because we don't have anybody to take care of it. <laughs> but we are on Facebook, and our events will be on there. Um, the uh, Ukulele Orchestra of St. Andrews, if you just start typing in Ukulele Orchestra of St., will pop up. So our events are there. There's pictures there. Our calendar is online. So you can find either group. You know, it's fun to wear two hats. And sometimes, as you well know, some of the songs for Halloween are also stories, and we like to mix and mingle those as well. So with her head tucked underneath her arm and Marie Laveau and some of those others, yeah, we have a lot, we have a lot of fun, and there's a lot of crossover there. Absolutely. Well, I don't see how you can't have a great time around y'all. Y'all are always having all the fun. That's our motto. Our first motto is to have fun. And the second is to spread music and musical enjoyment around the community. I would say that y'all are doing just that and doing a great job at it. And thank you so much. Well, Pat, thank you so much for being here today on the St. Andrew's Jezebel podcast. Until next time, happy Halloween and keep St. Andrew's spooky. 
St. Andrews has been decorated, and there's so many fun things going on to celebrate Halloween, including our own Halloween fest. The folks in St. Andrews also had a Halloween carnival way back in 1934. So for this week's Soul News segment, I thought it would be only fitting to read a column talking about the folks in St. Andrews in 1934. Hope y'all enjoy this one. Big Halloween Carnival Night of October 31st. The Recreational Department of the FERA are rapidly perfecting their plans for one of the largest carnivals that has been held in the city in a long time. All clubs and some of the schools are joining in for the proceeds derived are to be used to purchase equipment for the underprivileged children. The affair is to be held at the vacant lot opposite the post office and is scheduled to be one of the gayest and most colorful affairs of the season. Practically everything found in larger carnivals will be in evidence here, probably on a smaller scale. One of the outstanding features, and one destined to draw quite a large crowd of people, will be the parade, which will start from the City Hall between 7 and 7.30 p.m., and will march down Harrison Avenue to the point near the city dock where it will break up. No one will be allowed to get in the parade unless in costume and following in the line of march, for there will be judges who will be giving nice prizes for the best costumes or the most grotesque or fantastical as they see them. There is one provided for children and another for adults. The affair promises to be no end of fun and amusement for the young as well as the old, there will be music and many special features too numerous to mention. Will be some featuring candy, ice cream, bottled drinks, sandwiches. Others will feature many other interesting items and there is to be a fortune telling booth with a real live fortune teller. One capable of reading the past as well as being able to look into the future. At 9 o'clock, there is to be a dance in the high school gymnasium. Music is to be provided by a carefully selected orchestra. The dance will be sponsored by the Recreational Department. Be sure and not miss this special event, as it is given for all to have a good time and for all to do their part in assisting to have desired playgrounds for Panama City. I hope everyone has a fantastic and safe Halloween, and I hope you spend in St. Andrews. There have been a lot of artists, volunteers, and small business owners working hard to encourage the local festivities, and I would like to say thank you to all of them for all their hard work. You may have noticed the St. Andrews Jezebel podcast is ad-free. This is because of your generous donations that I am able to keep the lights on, so to speak, without corporate sponsors. But if you're a small business and you'd like to sponsor an episode, please DM the podcast and I'm more than happy to meet with you. Or if you're a listener and you'd like to donate to the podcast, then please visit our coffee page to make a one-time donation. It'll be listed in the show notes. Your donations help keep the St. Andrews Jezebel podcast going, and every little bit helps. Thank you. Don't forget, the St. Andrews Jezebel podcast is now available to stream on Facebook. So if you go to our Facebook page and follow the podcast, you'll receive a notification every Thursday when new episodes drop. The episodes are available on all streaming platforms, but I'm really excited to say that Facebook has finally joined the party. So if you haven't followed us, then please do and encourage your friends to do the same. If you liked our theme song, it was written by me and recorded by Dave Schwartz on the campus of Gulf Coast State College. The interview was recorded at Floriopolis, and the rest of the show was written on my kitchen table and recorded in my music room. I hope everyone has a wonderful and happy Halloween and a safe one, too. Till next time, keep St. Andrew salty. Ha <laughs> ha!